This lathe started out as an experiment. Uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted from a lathe, especially since I had never used one prior to building this one. Uh, I basically went online, I looked at pictures of lathes and uh, some wooden lathes that people have made and then also uh, regular metal lathes. And then I just started building. This has gone through several different versions. I've remade the tailstock, the headstock, how you advance the tailstock, how the rail system works. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the current design. And as I build the new components, I'll tell you about all the design changes that went into it and why I made the changes that I did. Uh, here, I started with a 5 8 threaded rod. And so the one inch threaded rod, there was a, a lot of different chucks that you could buy that would fit that. And so uh, that's why everything is designed to fit uh, this size rod. Now you may notice that I've got this long piece of threaded rod sticking out here. And the reason I did that is because it allows me to adjust the chuck forward. And now I've got space behind it for the tool rest. So if you're going to be building accessories, you want to be able to turn those accessories down. Uh, something like this. If you want to build a sanding disc, for example, you can advance this forward, put your tool rest behind it, and work on the back of it. Uh, right here you can see this space is pretty narrow. I knew by that point I was going to be using this DC motor with the speed controller. And so I really only left enough space to get one pulley in there. But in the new plans, it'll be wide enough to put three pulleys and to put some uh, locking nuts in there to keep the pulleys from sliding around. This guy can be loosened down here on the bottom. There's a knob underneath and a knob here which allows you to swivel this around in all directions. Uh, this design is okay, but I'm really wanting this part to be adjustable. Uh, there have been several times where I was working on a piece and I wanted to be maybe just a tiny bit lower or a tiny bit higher and there's no adjustment in this. So uh, the new tool rest will be adjustable. And the tail stock, as you would expect, is adjustable and then you use that lock to lock it in place and that also centers up the tail stock with the headstock. And you can see that there's a real live center here. I purchased this. And in the plans, you'll see the option for just, you know, purchasing a live center, as well as this piece, which I'll tell you about in a second. Or uh, the, there'd be a second tailstock design and all the pieces will be shop made. So we'll get into that when we talk about the tailstock. But it was important to me to be able to use um, a real live center and this has an M2 taper on it. Now, if you are a machinist, you know exactly what that means and how to make one. But I don't have any tools that would allow me to cut that accurately. And I spent quite a bit of time thinking about this problem before I decided that I would model something and have it 3D printed. And so that's what this is. This is a plastic that has an M2 taper on this side. And it's got a slot for a coupling nut, a one inch coupling nut over here. And if you want to do the shop made version, then you won't need either one of these components. But it was important to me that I could hold on to a live center or a drill chuck that was uh, mounted, uh, designed to have an M2 taper and so on. Back here on the back, there's a one inch nut that's used to help you drive this whole assembly forward. So basically you would spin this, this will push everything forward, and then you use this, and that will lock the assembly in place and keep your uh, tailstock, specifically your live center, from moving away from your workpiece uh, while it's spinning. The motor rail system is configurable. So this has slotted holes in it. Uh, the new design is shaped a little bit different. It's a little easier to build. That would be your base. But I also experimented with other bases that could just be put on top of it. So these aren't meant to be pretty. These are just proofs of concept. And so I wanted to be sure that this base was configurable for whatever type of motor you may have. This guy right here is for sanding. Uh, I made this slot so that when I slide this on the rail system here, uh, I could make accessories that would ride in this slot. And this is a 12 inch disc, it's actually 12 and an eighth. And of course you can put a 12 inch sanding disc on here. Right now I've got a 10 inch disc because that's just what I had in the shop. 
And this is all made out of wood except for this component here, which is a one inch coupling nut. The new version is going to be very similar to this, except I have uh, redesigned this base a little bit uh, for the new mounting system. Several of you have asked about plans for this lathe, and I thought about that a great deal while I was redesigning the, the new version for myself. Specifically, I was thinking about how easy it is to build and how much it can be configured based on the materials you have. And so many of those concepts will be in the plans when they're available um, for the new design. But I also thought some of you may want to build along with me. You know, you could be like a, a beta tester for a new software. So here's what I want to offer you. If you followed the link in the description before I finish this video series, there you will be able to purchase an early release version of my plans. Now the plans are not going to be complete. It's going to be whatever stage we're at in the build series. So if you come in after the very next video, you're going to see the plans for the rail system. And if you come in a week after that, you'll see the head and tail stock and the rail system and so on. And by the time we're done, we'll have all the accessories and everything built as well. So that is the plan. And I think that's going to be fun. I'll get a chance to see some pictures of the rest of you guys making it. And it, it'll, it'll be fun to, uh, to work together on that. And also you'll have my email address so that you can uh, send me messages and pictures if you have questions during the build process. The way I benefit from that is it gives me a chance to see what kind of problems uh, you may run into during construction and I can adjust the plans if I need to to make that aspect easier to build. So that's the plan for that. And the final thing I want to tell you about is the new addition to my shop. Uh, about two weeks ago I got some new lathe tools. And all I can say is, holy cow, the difference is unbelievable. I mean, I feel like somebody took my bicycle and handed me a BMW. Dennis Ring is the man I have to thank for this. Uh, he saw my first lathe video and he took pity on me and in the comments he said, hey, if you will set up an Amazon wish list, I'll get you some lathe tools. And he kept his word. Now I've got a tool that'll last for many years. So. Thank you, sir. You'll see these a lot over the next couple of weeks because, hey, if we're breaking in the new lathe, we gotta make some stuff, right? So, this is awesome, thank you.